wonderful, John, if one day the Charleston Manor Festival could have the whale. My goodness, yes, it would. You'd have to have, to have the whole orchestra and chorus inside Ty's barn, and you'd have to have <laughs> the audience, and the audience layered up, <laughs> on, up in the terrace. Up the terrace, It would be yeah. fantastic. And in a sense, then, Ty's barn would become the whale, which would yeah. be very relevant yes, because it's very good. I was, as you know, very heavily involved with both Paul and Ringo on their own properties mm -hmm. uh, at the time when they were all together as the Fab Four. And um, it was indeed with Ringo that uh, the whale um, yes. uh, connection came. It was my morning breakfasts with Ringo on a daily basis. Uh, but when yes. I um, first took the tape of the mm. whale, which I asked you to get a copy for me, and um, played it to him, and he was really excited by it. And uh, we then went on down to Savile Row to their uh, Apple label, and uh, he played it to the other three. And uh, of course, it was from there on that it became an Apple label piece. And uh, after that, of course, came the Celtic Requiem. Yeah. You know, you were quite a 60s person in a way. With this classic cars, you used to collect fat. Oh, yes, cars. yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I adored cars. But when I was little, um, my father used to bring home pamphlets of, of, of cars because my mother drove one car and she loves very sporty cars. And my father drove a much bigger car. He used to bring the pamphlets back. And at the age of three and four, my nanny, I remember telling me, I remember doing it, I used to stamp on the cars ritualistically in the room and say, big car, little car, big car, little car, big car, little car, big car, little car. I met the Beatles. I, I, uh, the one long friend, lasting friend, is Mia Farrow. We were probably... Both. He was more of a devil than I was. Yes. In, what, in what respect? Uh, with, with women, I think. Oh, with women. <laughs> the cook came up to me and said, Mr. John, whatever you do, don't eat the vegetables. And so I thought, well, why not? I love vegetables. Anyway, I ate the vegetables. And I woke up six hours later underneath the dovecot because they were laced with uh, hashish. <laughs> so I have had, I, I have taken drugs, but in, uh, only in the form of food. A vegetable. In vegetable. Old Bentleys and old. Rolls I like old things. I hate the modern world. <laughs> and there was a society for the promotion of new music weekend that I went on, and and people were sitting there over a microphone, just putting stones. And it went on, this was about three hours, you know, just putting objects on the floor. And I thought, I, mean, I can't stand any of this. And me and a friend, we just went off and, 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 and switched the, the, all the fire alarms on. And so we were treated the next morning as if we'd, uh, God knows, uh, blasphemed. Was it a time when you felt less religious than you do now? I mean, we're just having a hell of a good time in the 60s, and we can admit these things when we're old. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember girlfriends of me saying, oh, the Pope's spouting in the other room, referring to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, even though I drank quite a lot of wine, I was always spouting religion, yeah. 